We're, we're rolling. Oh yeah? Well, well, your mom smells like tuna fish. <laughs> we're rolling. Oh, sorry. So, how much does AMD pay you for the... <laughs> There's that one troll that was posting that on like every YouTube thing ever. Every YouTube thing? It was all over 4chan. Are you kidding me? You guys think it hurts me, and it actually does. You should maybe say not, not only did AMD not pay us, some months we eat, you know, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches every day. And today, for lunch, I had a, I had peanut butter on a cliff Bar. <laughs> <laughs> it was delicious. Yeah, it turns out making YouTube videos and posting them to the internet like a crazy person, not not really a good way to have a lot of income. But you gain so much power. I mean, look at me right now. i am got all this power, don't I? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So let's talk about the community first. We're going to talk about Bitcoins, and we're going to talk about evil companies, just like we always do, and we're going to talk about really awesome games and hacks and all kinds of things today. First off, I want to talk about some things that are going to help you and help us at the same time. Now, of course, we have some affiliate accounts now, and there's some really amazing deals on some games. Bioshock and Defiance are on sale for $44.99 each. That's like 15 bucks off of what you can get on Steam, so go and check them out. There's a link in the description. It really helps us, and you, you save money, so that's the kind of thing I like. I picked up XCOM, um, Unknown Enemy, or Enemy Unknown, that's actually a lot of fun. I'm just kind of getting used to the camera angles and stuff, but it has some... I mean, I love turn-based. It's fun. Have you played it yet? No, I have not. So that I'm, one's a lot I'm of fun, I'm still focusing too. on where you whipped your flirts. You well, can't whip your flirts. <laughs> <laughs> when, you, when, you, when you whip your flirts, people make fun of you, and it's very terrible. This game has an odd sense of humor as well. Um, you know, I thought it was going to be all serious and stuff, but no, it's got an odd sense of humor. I also think you guys are picking up Zweihander. That's still doing really well. I'm getting pretty close to releasing the second album. I'm still working on like we've got to work on the concept art for the cover and all that stuff too. But um, everything's moving along quite nicely. All right, let's get right into the content, shall we? If you're a web developer, I know we've got a lot of developers and a lot of indie game makers out there as well. So what's up, everybody? Thank you guys for watching this show. It makes me feel special, and that's good. I don't know. I'm getting all sappy today because we hit under, we hit a hundred thousand. So that's why I'm being so sappy and emotional. Yeah, Thanks. congratulations, us, hundred thousand. <laughs> Yeah. Awesome. You, just, you, just, <laughs> you sound so enthusiastic over there about it. I am so enthusiastic. <laughs> anyway, if you're a web developer uh, or a web designer, you might want to take a look at this. It's made uh, by someone who works at Google. It's breaking the 1,000 milliseconds time to glass mobile barrier. What the hell does that mean? It, it means making a page load in under a, under a second. It's really interesting to look at what, I mean, you can skip around. You it's don't, a really long video. Yeah, it's like 45 minutes long. But it's really interesting to look at all the the work that goes into rendering a web page. We've done a lot here to streamline our web page, and we even had to move to a bigger server. A lot of it's, I mean, you can do as much as you want, but if you have a million people on your website, it's going to run slow until you get a bigger server. So there's that. Apple, where are they going to get their NAND flash memory? Yeah, they've uh, they've sort of peed in the sandbox with Samsung, which is the <laughs> world's largest manufacturer of NAND flash. And so now it's like, damn, where do we get our flash? Yeah, that's a really good analogy because I've always said that Apple is kind of like the kid in the playground who just runs around messing up all messing with all the other kids. And then afterward, they want to, you know, like, hey, can I borrow your homework so I can cheat and do my homework? It's like, no, no, you just broke my fire truck and then hit me in the face at lunch and now you want to borrow my homework screw you dude no what i predict will happen was uh you know in the beginning before flash they had like battery backed sram like you get a battery backed sram card mm -hmm. apple's gonna do that and be like we invented that <laughs> this, this was before were they using that they're, they're like something like that in uh well they were using micro drives in the old uh, ipods i think yeah yeah so they it's were... a little different but it's kind of similar yeah um, they're, they're totally gonna put just you know gobs and gobs of ram chips in there with a little three volt lithium cell and be like this is together. so fast <laughs> And so expensive. For like a seven hundred dollar iPod. Who needs flash? Four gigabytes of RAM in your iPod. <laughs> it's gonna anyway. happen. That's exactly what's gonna happen. So anyway, here's what happened. In in two thousand and five they, they got a hundred or one point two five billion dollars and they gave it to a bunch of companies to basically ensure that they had tons of RAM uh, or no, tons of RAM. Tons of NAND flash. And now they're running out and guess who controls most of the world's NAND flash? Samsung. Samsung. <laughs> so let's see what they come up with. I, I cannot wait to see how they weasel their way out of this one. But I'm, And Samsung's response is like, well, yeah, you guys can have some NAND flash at a really high cost, but we need most of it for our tablets and our devices. See, the other side of the coin there is that they're switching from Samsung to TSMC, 
to manufacture their their ARM uh, processors, mm-hmm. but they couldn't. They tried to do it sooner, but Samsung has proprietary IP in theirs, and so it was like, oh crap, because Samsung was like, no, no, we we're not going to give this to a competitor. No, this is kind of scary. Uh, a hijacker used Android to remotely hack and drive an airplane, not like a toy airplane, like a freaking commercial jet. So the the scary thing is here is it was all unencrypted. And uh, the way the entire system works, the automated uh, dependent surveillance broadcast system, that is, well, they communicate with the towers all the time. And you can go on eBay and you can buy kits to learn to use this stuff and to learn how to do these controls. And those kits come with instructions on how to, you know, interface and control the airplanes. So he took that information and he got some radios and started listening to the unencrypted, you know, communications and whatnot and figured out what was going on. And the next thing you know, he's able to hack in because everything's unencrypted and drive the plane around as long as the plane's on autopilot. Newer planes, I mean, they get in there, they could just turn off the pilot's ability because it's all computerized, just turn off the pilot's ability to do anything about it and be like, no, no, we're, we're going to sit here and drive the plane. It's my new favorite video game here called, you know, Jumbo Jet Hijack. Yeah, we, we marvel at the driverless cars, but airplanes have essentially been driverless for some time now. The point is that these messaging systems and networks are not very hardened against attack, which is very bad. Yeah, I don't think they anticipated this sort of thing when they developed them, you know, decades ago. Yeah, no. So that's kind of scary. I want to mention this um, offhandedly, then we'll move on. eBay is now selling your private data uh, and your browsing data to third-party companies so that they can put targeted ads on their site while you're there. So I'll mention that. just wanted to let you guys know that. And uh, also in things that I wanted to let you guys know, Facebook uh, and YouTube are declining in popularity among uh, teenagers. And teenagers represent a very massive part of the market, an $8.1 billion uh, consumer segment. That's pretty big. Well, here's what's going on. Because they're not leaving the Internet. They're still on the Internet. What's growing? Twitter's growing. Uh, Reddit is growing. Reddit you know, just showed up out of nowhere on this chart. Um, Flickr's kind of growing, which why the hell is Flickr growing? Probably because of Reddit. All the photos. Yeah. I, I, I expected to see a- Imager on here. Tumblr is um, getting bigger. That's interesting to see. Uh, Pinterest is getting smaller, thank God. And Pinterest is such a pain in my ass. And um, 4chan is growing. Let's talk about terrible companies for a minute. Uh, the consumerist, for the second year in a row, have rated EA as the world's worst company. That's they're the, not the world's worst, the worst company in America. And this has been voted upon by the fans, and they do like you know sort of like a March Madness thing where they get like Bank of America and you know all these other J.P. Morgan Chase and all these other companies, and they put them <laughs> in, and then people vote all the way up until the final four, then the final two, then you know EA came out on top. Monsanto was not part of this list, surprisingly, because I think Monsanto just is the worst company in the world, so they, they're disqualified you know uh comcast also got chided a bit because they sent an internal memo to all their employees asking them to go there and please no don't vote for us vote for somebody else <laughs> <laughs> and uh, i don't know if that was substantiated or not but yeah. i saw an article that was something to that effect and i was like wow really because comcast was you know in the running for worst company in america and then it was like hey employees uh we don't want to be the worst company in america go vote and it's like damn it you know, I've been hearing so many complaints about EA, and I wanted to take a moment now because we have a freaking internet channel with 100,000 subscribers, so I wanted to take a moment to just say something about that. People complain about SimCity. People complain about Origin all day long. There would be nothing to complain about if you would stop buying their products. Like, just stop buying their crap, and then you won't have anything to complain about. I know you want to play Battlefield 4. I know you do. There are other games out there that are a lot of fun, like Rise of the Triad is going to be a lot of fun. It's a totally different kind of, kind of game. Um, Arma 3 can be a lot of fun. Try some other games. Try I really some like indie Tropico. Games. Tropico. You like Tropico? The, that's um, Kind of like SimCity. Kind of like SimCity? Yeah. It's, it's really good. Yeah, I don't think there's anything that's exactly like SimCity, but there are there's alternatives. And there's, there's plenty of old games on good old games that you guys could be playing. Uh, you know, Heroes of Might and Magic is a hell of a lot of fun. Play some other games. Just stop buying EA games. I'm sick of hearing people complain and then go out and buy EA games all day. Stop it. That's insanity. Yeah. <laughs> the way EA treats their programmers, it's like, uh, you know, uh, like you see meat. And it's like this is farm-raised meat or whatever. This is like cage-grown chicken. EA is like cage-grown programmers. <laughs> 
I felt really bad because some of the indie developers that we met at PAX um, had worked at EA. And I will not say which ones because they told me that this is off the record. But I said, how was it? And they said, well, imagine a bunch of people huddled under a table while a guy in like a Gestapo outfit hits us with whips and things. <laughs> because that's pretty much what it was like. That's the stories I've heard. So I was like, wow, I'm sorry, dude. And we hugged it out. You know, I was like, dude, I'm sorry. And he cried on my shoulder. It was uh, it was emotional. Uh, so there's an Iranian scientist named uh, Ali Rezegheri. Rezegheri? Yeah. I'll... He's not a scientist. He's a 27-year-old kid. Yeah. Says he's a scientist. But he's no, in, no. He's, he's invented a time machine. He's a scientist for the sun's definition of a scientist. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's the he's the geneticist who researched Bat Boy. So I mean, how much can you trust him? <laughs> <laughs> Bat Boy is real. I've seen him on the television or whatnot. His 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 machine also is not really a time machine. It's just like it brings you to the future or something like. Well, here's that. what he said: it does. It like can accurately predict the next five to eight years of your life, uh, and it's like ninety eight percent accurate. And then he's saying we can't show anybody. Because the Chinese will steal the idea. And closing that topic, that's enough airtime for that. And let's talk about CISPA, because a lot of disturbing things are happening with CISPA. CISPA has passed in a committee and is now going to the House floor for a vote. So there was an amendment uh, that some guys put in there because the public asked for more specific language stating that the NSA would not be allowed to use this information to spy on the citizens of the United States of America. So they put this stuff into CISPA. They took it to the committee, and the committee was like, we will not even vote for it until you pull that amendment out of CISPA. But they were like, but this is what you said you wouldn't do. You said you guys wouldn't use this stuff to spy on American citizens, but then we put in the, the, the language that says that you can't use it to spy on American citizens, and then you say, no, take that out. We'll just promise that we won't do it, but we don't want that written into CISPA. So that's what's going to the House now. That without the fancy amendment. Does that make sense? Yeah, the, okay, the actual quote from the guy, like the guy goes on to be like, no, no, this doesn't matter. From Rogers, he's one of the authors. Yeah, yeah, but the quote literally says... And if you want the gold standard protection from cyber attacks, the NSA has to be at least somewhere. Yeah, but he started off in that exact exact quote there by saying, "Well, no, 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 the NSA they're they're not authorized to monitor. It's it's they're not it's... going to do anything with this data except yeah. be the gold standard of protection from cyber attacks." So, so it's in like, the first half, he says they're not going to monitor anything, and this is not a surveillance bill. And then right after that, right after that, he says. Well, yeah, the, the NSA has to monitor it if you want to be protected. So, what? <laughs> this doesn't make any sense. It makes no damn sense. But that's what's going to the House right now, so write, uh, write letters. The Start level writing. of dishonesty here is just unbelievable. I mean, there could not be a more transparent... I mean, this is just this is it's, disturbing. A disturbing level of incompetence and dishonesty. I mean, they, they say never attribute to malice what can be explained by simple stupidity, but... I Look think we that. have a combination of uh, stupidity and malice here. Yeah. So I, I'm not sure why there's such malice. I mean, we, had, I don't know. Well, I think it's probably, you know, scared to death of the Internet. I mean, would this type of thing ever have passed with the public telephone system? And it's like, you know, terrorists might use the public telephone system to communicate. Therefore, we have to encumber it and basically make it useless. It's like, well, that, that doesn't, no, I don't think so. Oh, this is horrifying as well. The IRS um, is now allowed to look through... Whatever you do on the internet, your emails... Um... Well, they just, they sort of cavalierly said, we've always had the right to look at your emails without a warrant in, in trying to figure out finances and things like that. And so it was it was sort of an eyebrow-raising thing where it's like, huh, that's really weird. So you're saying you don't have to have a warrant or, or anything? You can just seize it? And yeah, and then weird. they started talking about, they were bragging about their technology. They said their technology would make like people in the private sector's heads explode. That's essentially what they said. They're like, oh, it's amazing. So the, uh, w they say they're not going to do anything with this stuff. That's what they say. That we're not going to do anything with it. We're just going to collect it all. We're going to look at it all. But they can watch your transactions online. They mention like bank transactions and stuff like that. They can watch all that. They can watch emails. They can watch your online activity, your purchase history. Uh, all that is going to be readily available to the IRS. Now, here's what I'm going to say about this. Even if they go in there and they say, hey, listen, this is this is all this stuff here... Um, you know, has not been claimed on your taxes, so you're going to need to pay more taxes. Even if they do that to private citizens and collect more taxes on that, the amount of tax dollars that's going to have to be spent to put a system like this into practice, the amount of tax dollars that's already being spent on nonsense like this, is probably greater uh, than the benefit of collecting the taxes, and they're also harassing the public. 
I'm not sure if the numbers are still consistent, but fully seven or eight years ago, there was a study and they, they said that they spend 50% of the prior year's taxes collecting the next year's taxes. It's like, wow, really? 50%? That's kind of disturbing. But that was, uh, that was probably like 2005. <laughs> oh, man. Well, you know, in a few years it'll be we spend about 120% of the tax money <laughs> that we make to collect next year's taxes. So what you're telling me is I should look out for uh, derivatives that have IRS futures bundled into them? <laughs> <IRS> futures. <laughs> I'll tell you what they're going to do. They're going to get in cahoots with the, uh, the the prison system, you know, the, the private prison system I'm talking about. And they're going to end up spending more. Uh, to collect the taxes and then throw people in jail for not collecting their taxes just so their friends who work at these and own these private prisons can make money. That's what's going to happen. Yeah, what's, well, it's going to be even more disturbing than that because it's not really going to be debtors' prisons, but you'll be expected to report, you know, nights and weekends to the prisons to, you know, do whatever. Yeah. It's like you have your day job, but then when your day job's over, you need to report to prison to make license plate. And then it's going to cost tax dollars to run those prisons. Yeah. So. Well, and the people that own the prisons are going to make money on the people that are in the prisons paying off the debt. <laughs> we, we see what you're doing, you bastards. Speeding tickets will be like a $100,000 fine. Crazy stuff like that. Hyperlapse. Let's talk about something nice for a minute. Have you seen Hyperlapse? Yeah, it looks pretty interesting. Yeah, they, they wanted to create like time-lapse photos like you see, the really dramatic photos with like the skies flying by and all that kind of stuff. And they decided to make them more accurate. They would use you know, Google Street View as a tool. And then they realized, you know what, we can just use Google Street View as like essentially the camera. So they created the Google Street View hyperlapse. They released the source on uh, GitHub so you guys can check it out. But it's pretty cool. I'll, I'll open it up here so you guys can see what it does. Let's just play this for a second. Yes, 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 I've got Flash Blocker. Without the music, yeah, the technos. So there you have it. <laughs> Dubstep Google Maps. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Now using Google Maps to generate these things. So you guys can go watch the rest of that on your own. On your own time, on your own dime. I'm closing it. It's pretty though. I enjoyed watching it. Made my day. Google has finally uh, stood up to the FBI and denied one of the requests for, you know, warrantless information. Now, this is interesting because Google is the first company to do this, and, you know, the FBI has been issuing thousands and thousands of information requests uh, to various, diff you know, various companies. So people are, like, all coming out and saying, hey, look, Google is finally standing up for us and fighting the FBI, and I'm going to say I don't think that's entirely the case because Google has surrendered tons of information uh, to the FBI, and the FBI did not have a warrant for any of that information. It's written into law that the FBI could just come and ask for information, and most companies are compelled to give them that information. So what I think has happened here is that the FBI has asked for something that perhaps wasn't 100% legal, the way they did it, or the information perhaps needed a warrant. Well, it's also true that this particular one uh, was being reviewed by a judge that had ruled in EFF's favor in another case. And so maybe their lawyers were like, oh, this judge gets it. We, let's go ahead and you know take the chance while we got it. Yeah, I don't think Google's happy about giving information to the FBI, but I think they do give information to the FBI. And this is one case that's made headlines, but I don't want everyone to come out and think that Google is a good guy for doing this. I think Google may have good intentions, but they still... This is literally one among thousands. Yeah. They still give lots and lots of information to the FBI, so just keep that in mind. They're a business, and they've got business interests. Bitcoin! Let's talk about Bitcoin. It crashed. We, got, we were all excited about it on Tuesday. <laughs> this just in. Bitcoin hit $60. Oh, my God! Ah! Yeah, people have been freaking out of burning couches in the street, flailing cats above their head and throwing them into public so that they can attack people. People in Cyprus are ready to riot because they tried to put all their money in there to get it out of the banks because of the whole stuff going on in Cyprus. And then it was like, whoops. And there's all kinds of stuff going on on Reddit. I mean, back and forth. People are freaking out. And this guy on uh, Slate.com, what's his name, Eric Posner, um, he says that Bitcoin is a Ponzi scheme. And he's got his article here, and a lot of people on Reddit are going crazy saying that this guy's a moron. He, he, he just shows up on the scene and reads three things about Bitcoin and then uh, you know, makes his opinion and then writes an article. It's really interesting. I mean, it, as, in terms of like a worldwide mathematically verifiable currency that is completely transparent but also anonymous... It fits that bill astonishingly well. Of a, being a Ponzi scheme. Well, no, not of being a, a Ponzi scheme, but of being a, a currency that makes sense to use worldwide. I mean, the mechanics of it and how it's put together works really well for a worldwide currency. 
but it's only worth what someone's willing to pay. It's not time to get out of Bitcoin yet, is what I think. Well, but, it, bottom, um, it bottomed out at 55, and the day before yesterday, it was at 250. Yeah. So that's a, that's pretty volatile. It, it is kind of dangerous, but I would not... I would not uh, uh, it, it doesn't mean that the concept's not viable. It's not time to run and hide. I mean, there's a there's a thread on Reddit called Hold Spartans where people are talking about it that's pretty interesting. Uh, but here's something else that's interesting. A lot of people were saying that the, the crash came because of a DDoS attack uh, at Mt. Gox, and Mt. Gox is where a lot of people do their trading. Um, they're down for maintenance right now, but Mt. Gox said that it was not a DDoS attack. It was a ridiculous amount of transactions all happening at the same time because Bitcoin got so popular and so expensive that everyone started selling off like mad. In the entire month of March, there were 60,000 new accounts on Mt. Gox, and in the first few days of April, 75,000 new accounts. 75,000 new accounts. So that's ridiculous. They were getting like over 20,000 accounts a day in the first few days of April. People were buying and selling and moving money around like crazy. So that's really what's going on with Bitcoin. The Winklevoss twins own 1% of Bitcoins. The, the, the Winklevi? The Winklevi. You may remember them from such dot-coms as Facebook and, I don't know. They were the ones who sued Zuckerberg. Yeah, yeah. Well, they were on the, the rowing team, right? Yeah, they were on the, the Harvard rowing team. Mm -hmm. What they're, if they're behind Bitcoin? What if, they, what if they've... No, they're not behind Bitcoin. <laughs> they're not the anonymous source behind Bitcoin. I mean, I know they're stupid and all that. Well, the uh, the uh, no, I mean they're they're pretty smart financial they're people. Well, they're but savvy, but they don't know about the internet. No, um, but uh, I th I think that one of the RSA uh, guys and Bruce Schneer, like the top computer science people in the world, have looked at the source of Bitcoin and said that you know it comes from the mind of, of a genius if it's just one person or the team is incredible. So. I mean, yeah. mechanically, how it works and how the transactions works and how the distributed network works, it's absolutely brilliant. And it's so nice to be able to see, you know, all of the transactions happening with the entire currency all of the time. Yep. But we still have our Bitcoin mining team, and that's not going to go away. Uh, I still think Bitcoins are going to be viable enough to help us improve the website quite a bit. So you guys can check out the article here uh, for the Bitcoin mining team. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll talk to Rytac and see what he thinks about this because he's really into the Bitcoin thing and uh, he may have some insights. So if you want to jump over there, I'm sure he'll be happy to answer questions. We've got a lot of guys on the Bitcoin mining team. There's even a Mumble server that is open to the public if you guys want to go in there and talk about Bitcoins. I just talked to Nate as well. Nate, Nate's very bearish about this, so he's another one of the members on our website. So there's a lot of opinions going back and forth. And I'll tell you what I'm going to be doing for the next few days. I'm going to be playing around with Litecoin. Uh, Z-Train. Z-Train is one of the smartest members on our website. And I want everyone to know this. So when you see him talk, just listen to what he has to say because his mind works in a different way, and I like that. But he has been making a lot of money on Litecoin, and uh, to him he's saying that Litecoin has been, has been more profitable than Bitcoin. And in our forums here, he uh, has a nice little article uh, about what he's doing, how he's made money, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So go and check out Z-Train's thing on Litecoin. Litecoin is um, a little bit more diff difficult to obtain than Bitcoin because it's not as widely used or not as widely transferred around, et cetera, et cetera. The algorithm is much more complex to it compute is. hashes. Yeah. I mean, we're talking kilohashes instead of mega hashes when you're, you know, processing or mining. Or, um, but, hey, it's at a really low point right now. It's like a dollar fifty at the time of filming this. It was $11 not long ago. So I'm not sure where it's going to go up or down. I don't think it's going to evaporate into nothing. And I think that I, you know what I think is going to happen? This is my personal opinion, and if you lose a lot of money in Litecoin, do not come crying to me. I think that people are going to start looking at these two alternative uh, currencies, Bitcoin and Litecoin, and they're going to see them as investing opportunities, or they're going to see them as something they can put money into, like outside investors that are not necessarily Internet investors normally. They're going to see them almost like a stock, and they're going to look at Litecoin as the, uh, the cheaper, younger brother of Bitcoin, and they may sink a lot of money into it just because it's cheap. That's what I think may happen. And if they do that, that will push the value up because that's the way stocks work. Someone, when people like throw a lot of money at one thing, it tends to rise. Even if it artificially rises, there'll be a bubble. Get out when the bubble gets high. And usually when the bubble gets high is when the media starts yelling and screaming about it. And then get back in when the bubble's low again. Yep. <laughs> so if the media starts yelling and screaming about Litecoin, 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 like they similarly did with Bitcoin just now, get the hell out like everyone did and then make the price crash. And it's just going to go up and down. But some other people are likening the Bitcoin crash to the dot-com crash. And they even brought up the graphs to show that. And they're saying that over time it's going to fade away to almost nothing. So there's a lot of speculation out there right now. Yeah, since Mt. Gox reopened, it's up from 65 to 130. So, so people who got in at 65 are really happy right now. Yeah. 
You were trying to get him, but you couldn't make a transaction, right? It was like something wrong. Yeah, well, it doesn't. It turns out. I mean, it's been a while. I've just I've got the coins that are in my wallet, and I haven't yeah. really done anything with them. And uh, the coins that I've been mining, and it turns out that you can't buy bitcoins with PayPal anymore. Like PayPal actually has come out at some point in the last few months. I wasn't paying attention. Oh and, Jesus! And said no. Litecoin earlier today was a dollar forty. And I was trying to buy a bunch, but it takes a, a lot of junk. You have to jump through a lot of hoops, and I didn't have time. I was like, I need to outline the tech. It's two forty right now. <laughs> I was trying to few, throw a few thousand dollars into Litecoin. And now all the viewers are going to go buy it, and it's going to go up. You're going to be accused of insider trading. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean to. No, no. If I'm if I'm in trouble for that, then so is the guy on Mad Money. What's his name? Kramer. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> bye. He he has he has sort of been not in trouble for that, but he has sort of. I don't know. It's 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 interesting. Well, sometimes he tells people to buy like a penny stock, and then <laughs> yeah, <laughs> everyone buy this penny stock, and he's like, good, good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he didn't. He the money he makes from filming that show is nothing compared to the money he makes in the markets. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Mount Gox is back up. How about that? Yeah. And that's why it's going up. See, at one point today, you could buy Low bitcoins on. You could buy bitcoins on one exchange and sell them on another <laughs> exchange at one at one point today. It's been a freaking mess. All right, so um, yeah, yeah. Why didn't I buy Litecoins earlier? Because oh. it's hard. Because they the, make the, you jump through hoops. Yeah. I, uh, apparently, one of the options now is I can take a wad of cash to CVS, and that's almost instant. So I guess I'm going to be going to CVS with a wad of cash. <laughs> <laughs> what has become of this show i don't know we're giving financial advice to i don't even know we, we don't know what the hell we're doing all right let's talk about uh hardware i'm sorry i'm on tom's hardware right now i can't stand this website but i'm on tom's hardware i think it's all the advertisements and some of the news is a bit fishy to me but anyway they're talking about uh thunderbolt the next generation thunderbolt 20 gigabit per second now there was another article i was reading about the haswell platform and thunderbolt and apparently there's just a firmware update and that's like a stepping stone for this new version of Thunderbolt. And the firmware update makes it about a million times faster and more stable. Mm -hmm, but there's not, the... not really any detail. That's actually about all I've got to talk about in the hardware world today. Not a lot going on since Tuesday. So let's talk about science. We didn't talk a lot about that this week. Um, so some scientists have made a brain see-through. That's pretty awesome. Uh, what they've done is they've taken a rat's brain. And the thing that makes a brain, um, I guess the thing that makes, that, that makes them opaque is the fact that there is fat, the lipids, right? So they found a way to remove the lipids and insert like a gel and, and still maintain the structure of the brain, and then they can see right through it. This is important for studying the um, structure of the brain in terms of how groups of neurons connect to other groups of neurons. It shows what they were doing with earlier, like in the video, but um, yeah. But the, yeah, they are going to be able to inject the brain with different colors and see what happens and... I'm not exactly sure how it all works. I'm not a neuroscientist at all. But I will be someday. I'm going on to get my degree online. <laughs> Let's talk about gaming. Uh, so this guy here, you can see him on the screen. Uh, he goes by Sucker Pinch on YouTube, but I'm not sure of his real name. I'm sure they said it in the beginning of the video. You can rewind, rewind it and watch it. Anyway, he's been working with a program, and um, he's he's got a computer playing Nintendo Entertainment System games like Mario Brothers and that sort of thing. So let's just fast forward. It's an artificial intelligence. Yeah. So I'm just going to fast forward to the part where you, the the game is, you know, it's a it's a relatively simplistic artificial intelligence. Basically, uh, the artificial intelligence uh, has a sequence of moves, which is from him on how to play, and yeah, like it it watches the score to know how to get things to count up. Not just the score, but a few other regions of memory to look for things that are counting up. That follow certain rules, and uh, counting up is awesome. And it, there's some little things that the AI runs into where it'll, it's like it'll wait in a certain area because it gets five points for doing something, and it's just really interesting. It really sucked at Tetris because, like, you know, you get three points for just landing a block anywhere. So the first time it landed a block, it was like, oh, cool, I got three points. And it just slammed all the blocks on top of each other, and then it realized it was going to lose when it hit the top, right? So it's right before it hits the top, the game paused itself. It pressed the pause button, and it that's it. It was done. And it just <laughs> left it paused forever. Because it knows as soon as it takes pause off, it loses the game, and it cannot lose. Yeah. So. <laughs> the only winning move is not to play. Yep. So I thought that was kind of funny. But some of the things that are funny about this to me were some of the ridiculous moves that the, that the game pulled off in Mario Brothers. Like, 
landing on Goombas in midair. Adam Orth. Now, Adam Orth is the guy who got out there and started tweeting, and his tweets are incredibly stupid. He's no longer with Microsoft. Nope, he's done. Now, he's the guy who... He resigned with large quotation marks around that. Yeah. <laughs> I bet EA hires him. <laughs> him saying things like, uh, on Twitter, like, I want every device to be always on. And then he starts saying things like, those people should definitely get with the times and the internet and get with the internet. It's awesome. So he's he's just saying that it's always on. And then someone said, what about when the internet goes off? His response to that was like, well, the power goes off too. Honestly. I'm, I'm, I'm 85% sure that EA is going to hire him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. It's, I mean, that's the only place he could go work. Oh, God. Why would Microsoft hire somebody with a douchebag avatar like that anyway? So that guy's gone, so Microsoft did the right thing there. But it could just be like a... They wanted him to shut up, but they're still going to do the always-on thing. We'll see if they if they do or, or do not do the always-on thing. I think the public has made uh, such a mess that Microsoft's going to have, have to come out and be like, no, we're not doing the always-on thing for some games. I don't know. They'll find, they'll find some way to make it a yes and a no at the same time, if you know what I mean. Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon. It's all over the internet. So some Russian hacker uh, got into Uplay and wrote a little bit of code and it made Uplay think that he owned every game. So he was able to download everything, including the unreleased Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon. And because of that, there are tons of Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon videos floating around on the internet. It's on every torrent website. People can go and download the full game. I'm not sure how it works because I have not tried this myself. But I know some of you guys are going to go do that. And I know some of the guys in the comments are. I encourage you not to. Just wait for the game to come out on its own. But oh wow, this this guy, this guy's got balls. This guy here downloaded the game, uploaded it to YouTube, and monetized it. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this thing that I found on the internet. Give me money. Yeah, I I pirated this game that's not even out yet, and then posted video against Ubisoft's will to the internet. Now I'm making money on it. Yes. No, friend. I find this on the internet. I know pirate. Someone else may. I do not pirate. I find on I the internet. I find these. Yeah, your your YouTube account's gonna get banned, dude. But hey, it's I'm posting. Hey, can we get in trouble for this? I've linked a video on our website. That's not good. Oh yeah, it's it's there. I cannot figure out how Far Cry Three has anything to do with Far Cry Three, or Far Cry Three Blood Dragon has anything to do with Far Cry Three. It looks it's I don't understand. So if someone can enlighten me how the stories go together, if I don't whenever that do, press release comes out, we'll let you guys know. Until then, just be quietly confused. All right, one last thing in gaming that I want to take a look at. Obsidian um, had the uh, Project Eternity campaign um, that was Kickstarter. Anyway, they released just a little tech demo of the engine, and it looks beautiful, and it runs on um, on minimal hardware. So that's really nice. You guys can check this out. It's quite pretty. I wonder if all the money on Kickstarter gives people a big head. Yes, yes, it does. And sometimes they just disappear. <laughs> we should do a special about Kickstarter because there's a lot of really interesting things on Kickstarter and there's a lot of lot of swill on Kickstarter. In fact, I think the bulk of Kickstarter is swill. And you got to swim through the swill to find the gold. And that's the word of the week, by the way, swill. Anyway, watch the tech demo. Uh, anything else we want to talk about today? Um, can't really think of anything. Hmm. There's not, not really a lot happened. Oh, wait. Um, I, I totally forgot about this. We talked about so many bad companies. And the consumers voted, uh, and they made EA the worst company in the world. I want you guys to record a video. It can be a webcam of you sitting at your desk, just telling me what you think the worst company is, um, and and why. Like, is it Apple? Is it EA? Is it Monsanto? I mean, a lot of people are going to say Monsanto. So let's just go ahead and disqualify Monsanto because they're like the epitome of evil. Um, but let me know, and I'll pick one person out of everyone that sent all those in, and I'll give you a copy of Crisis Three from EA. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've got an extra serial number, and um, you're not—you would. I mean, you're not buying a game from EA, so how, how do you? How do I? Man, I, I've just—I kind of decided today. I wanted to stop supporting EA games until they straighten their act up a little bit and get rid of all of you know the draconian DRM and 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 all the anti-consumer stuff. But yeah, just tell me which company is the most anti-consumer, and we'll give you a and copy why. of Crisis Three and why. Yeah, subscribe. I feel really conflicted about doing that. I'll give you a product from EA for telling me. <laughs> <what> the, <laughs> but we have an extra shield number. What are we going to do with it? 
It's the only thing we can do. Give it away. I mean, one of the members was nice enough to send us a copy of it. He's like, I got one with my graphics card. I don't need it. So here you guys go. Uh, have at it. So that was really nice of him to send it over. And I never mind. Just subscribe. That's that's what you should be doing right now. Because 100,000 is not enough, people. I'm trying to take over the world. Nothing's going to be enough. We want to do more interesting videos. Yeah. Like, I, I want... Yeah, I don't want to hire people. And plus, you know, you need to call your Congress Critter because this whole CISPA thing... I mean, come on. This is ridiculous. Yeah, get on the horn, call your Congress Critter, and uh, that's pretty much the end of the episode. I feel like I'm leaving out something important. It does seem like we forgot something. Huh, that's a good way to end it then. All right. See you guys next time. For reference, in the entire munch of m munch, in the entire munch of March, the munch of March.